running. Your blessing is running. Your favor is running. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You are welcome to church this morning. You are welcome. This is the fourth Sunday of the month. I will give God praise and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, let me just welcome somebody to church this morning. So you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. The Bible says, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm so excited to see you. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. The choir, thank you so much. We got there at the end. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It was a journey. And we are able to praise God at the end. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in church this morning? Yes. If you are shy, you are happy, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's go into the word of God. So let's see what God, this is our month of uh, spiritual awareness. And uh, what? Wisdom. Combination. So uh, we're going to see how we can combine the two together this morning. So when God speaks, you know, he knows what is he's going to give us awareness and uh, spiritual wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, let's open our back to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Father, we give you praise and glory. In the name of Jesus. Let's start from verse 42. It's a very powerful scripture. We're going to read it all. Yeah. I'm going to read the Amplified Version. No, no. So let's, let's be focused. This, this is a powerful time. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm waiting for Sister Tola. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to read from verse 42. The Bible says, So it is with resurrect, resurrection of the body of the dead. Then, then we read the New King James Version so that it uh, will not take us out. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption and it's raised in what? In corruption. It is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory. Somebody declare, I'm raised in glory. I am raised in glory. It is sown in weakness and it is raised in power. Declare, I'm raised in power. I am raised in power. It is raised in the natural body but it is it is soon in natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. Somebody say, I'm raised in the spiritual body. I'm raised in the spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is what? Spiritual body. So it is written: the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Somebody say, I am a life-giving spirit. I am a life-giving spirit. And what verse 46. However, the spiritual is not the first. Hallelujah. But natural. Afterward, the spiritual. Somebody say afterward. Afterward. The spiritual. Spiritual. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's let me stop here. So what we're going to learn this morning, God wants us to bring us into the um, 
awareness, when we talk about awareness, uh, uh, what we mean by awareness? Awareness is knowledge. Awareness is understanding. Awareness is what? Wisdom. Amen. Amen. So those are the three elements are of awareness. Dimension which God wants to bring us to into. God is, you know, in this particular passage, Paul was talking to the church in Corinth, the Corinthians. If you look at them, he emphasized on their identity. Hallelujah. In, in chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He told them the way he approached them. He said, I did not come with human wisdom. I did not come to you uh, uh, with human understanding. I come to you in the power of God. Why is he saying that? He wants them to be aware of what they carry. Amen. Amen. And he mentioned, he said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, he has not entered into the heart of man what God has in store for us. And he began to declare how we receive the spiritual things. He said, natural person mind is natural things. But the spiritual people engage God spiritually. Hallelujah. If you want to receive the things of the spirit, you must be in the spirit. Hallelujah. So he mentioned it. He began to uh, you know, bring understanding, dimension, which they are not aware of. And in verse, in chapter 3, he started talking to them. He said, I did not talk to you like a spiritual man. I want to talk to you like a base. Because you are immature in the spiritual thing. You don't understand what I've been saying. He bring them into the awareness of how to tap into something supernatural. But they are not aware of it. There are still, there are still some things they are not practicing. You know. You know, there are things that is not of the spirit. You know, we discover that these people are bringing into this level. Their level is far. It's, it's so low. It's like what I'm discussing with them is so low. Yeah, they are so low in understanding of what I'm about to bring to pass, you know, in their life. And now in chapter 3, if you look at chapter 3, look at what the way he addressed them. Verse 1. He said, I, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual what? People. But as to what? Canon. As a baby in Christ. Okay? So what that simply means is that the lowest level of spirituality is natural. Amen? Amen. We are first of all start in the natural way. We started natural way. We are born of a woman. And when we came in, we came natural. Amen. But along the line, we encountered something. We gave our life to Christ. And immediately we gave our life to Christ, you are, you are, you are a changed person. That Bible says, that is which is born of the flesh is what? And that which is born of the spirit is what? So, how do we transit from natural to spiritual is what we don't understand. Amen. So immediately we give our life to Christ, our you know identity has changed. Amen. We have become a spiritual person. But we still behave, these people still behave as if they are natural. Now, he use the word kana. The word kana is somebody who is born again. They don't call them. They are natural anymore. Somebody who is born again, but they still don't understand the spiritual things. They are using the worldly things. You know, to, to I don't know how to put it. Here. Let me put it this way. They are spirit being. Understand it, what I mean? Positionally, because their position has changed, they have given their life to Christ. We have been translated from natural to the spiritual. But in the spiritual realm, 
they are still using the natural way of doing things to walk in their spiritual realm. It's not possible. I, I, am I communicating to somebody now? Like, for example, now most of us are from Africa and we go to UK and I say, okay, in Africa, I came to where I came from, we drive on the, is it right hand, right side? And you so saw left, 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 left side. So, and when you come to UK, you say, oh, I can't change. I'm still going to be driving the way I'm driving. What's going to happen? You're going to cause a lot of commotion. Amen? There are going to be a confusion. You are going to confuse yourself and you are going to confuse the people. You don't know that your area of operation has changed. You are not aware. Amen. Amen. And you want to spend, maybe you went to the supermarket and you say, oh, this is five pounds. And you say, five pounds multiplied by one thousand. Ah, I'm going to, you, you know, they are still thinking you are in Nigeria. And say, how oh, will I buy something 50,000 naira to eat food? Or to buy something, am I complicated? Yes. So, what we need is awareness, knowledge. We need understanding. We need, you know, to apply wisdom in the area where we are. Hallelujah. We started naturally, but we are not natural anymore. Somebody declares, let me preach to someone, I'm not natural anymore. I'm not natural anymore. Amen. Amen. So in the book of Corinthians, you now begin to tell them, there is a dimension, two dimensions. You started poor, but you are not poor anymore. You are rich. Somebody say, I'm rich. I'm rich. You started in weakness, but you are not weak anymore. You have power. Somebody say, I have power. I have power. You started in dishonor. People abuse you. They mess you up. But immediately you come to Christ, you are not abused anymore. You are not messed up anymore. You are in the place of advantage. Amen. Amen. He said, the natural start first. You started in sickness. Hallelujah. But immediately you come to Christ. You are not sick anymore. Amen. Somebody say, I cannot sick anymore. I cannot be sick anymore. The Bible says, he himself bore out our sickness. Amen. Amen. It, it, we started, you know, the way we started, natural first. Natural first. But immediately we come to Christ. We move into supernatural. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. He said, Concerning the supernatural, I don't want it to what? To be ignorant. That's why God wants us to bring us into the place of awareness. So that we can walk in victory. I love this uh, choice of song we sing today. But if you can grab those songs and play it all over again, we will know where we are. Amen. Amen. We will understand what to do. And so many of us will just say, Oh, I'm still where I used to be. You are not where you used to be. Your level has changed. Hallelujah. So the people of Corinth, they said, Look, you know. I fed you with milk, not with a solid food, for until now you are not able to receive it. Can you receive the level um, you, know, you are? He said, You are not able to receive it. Even now, you are still not able. What is happening? Even up to now, I explained to you, you know, the composition, everything you are made of. The first Adam was a living being, but his last Adam in Christ Jesus said, is a life giver. You are the one giving life. Because you are supernatural. And somebody, I want you to put your hand upon your head. 
and begin to say, Let the Lord I receive. See spiritual awareness. I receive spiritual awareness. In the mighty name of Jesus. So because of time, let us look at two type of people. Because you can be in church and connected to spirituality and not be able to know that um, work in, in their reality. Amen. Amen. You can be in church and not be able to receive all God has in store for you. Bible says one thing about God. God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him what? In spirit and in truth. If you want to receive from God, you have to be on the same line with him. Amen. Amen. So there are two ways. Number one, your position. Number two, your practicality. Amen. How do you practice being a spiritual person? How can I enter into that realm? Because immediately we give our life to Christ, one thing is that as a born again Christian, you know, you are different from the unbeliever. Unbeliever can never, can never receive the spiritual things. Because their spirit is natural. You know, they move, they are not, I don't know, I say their spirit is natural. They are in the natural realm. Until, except the unbeliever that got into the abodica means, they tap into the power of the word and so on, and they can use the spiritual power to effect the change. Amen. So let's quickly look at James. James. James chapter 3. And we now use the look at the example of somebody who is spiritual. James chapter 3. I will start from verse 13. It now is a question. And we need to ask ourselves this question. Okay? He said, Who is what? Wise. Wise. Who has wisdom? We are told you there are three elements uh, element in awareness. He said, Who is wise? And understand among you. So we can be here and you just sit down, but awareness of what God, you know, awareness of who you are or what God has in store for you, you don't know it. You now begin to say, let's define who has this spiritual awareness. Who is wise? And, and understand, how does it transit? He said, let him show. That's practical. Am I correct? Yes. You say, let him what? Show by what? Good conduct that his works are done. What? In the meekness of wisdom. Can you see how we combine these three things together? What is knowledge? Knowledge is information. Am I correct? Yes. Understanding is you perceiving this information. And it's in your spirit. And when you practicalize it, it becomes a wisdom. Amen? Amen? So they will call you a wise person. Am I correct? Yes. So for you to define who is a wise person and who has understanding, it has to do with the way that person conducts himself or practices what he knows. Amen? Amen. So, like for example, now, who has wisdom? Look at all this light at the top. How many of us knows we perceive it? Do you know how it? They install it. We don't know. We just enjoy the light. So the person that knows how to install it, that person must have what knowledge. Am I, am I correct? Yes. And with the knowledge, maybe that person went to school and studied electricity, 
you know, everything. So it doesn't guarantee that that person is wise until that person brings what he knows and he brings it into reality. And they will call that person electrician. It's not because you go to school, you have knowledge. Amen. We might be coming to church. Do we have or, 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 what understanding? Are we spiritual? So one of the ways to become who you are is to bring awareness. To raise awareness. And that's what God wants to do this month in our life. So that we can walk in victory. Amen. He said, who is wise? Who? And understanding among you. Let him become practical. And you are aware of the power of prayer. Do you pray? Amen. Amen. You are aware of the service that God will share today. Do you serve? Am, am I communicating? Yes. You know what service can bring in your life. Job chapter 36, verse 11. If you say, if you serve me and obey me, you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. You say, if you are willing and be obedient, you will do what? It's the good of the land. Are you willing? Are you obedient? Amen. Amen. You might say, I am willing and obedient. It's not by confession. It's by do what actually obey. And put it into practice. And then I said, let me say, okay. In verse 14. But if you are bitter, envy, and self seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. He said, this wisdom, this wisdom, anyone that is bitter, like what Pastor Fola said, you want to serve and you are bitter. It doesn't make sense. Amen. Amen. If you are bitter, if you are jealous, if you envy somebody that are going ahead in life, it's not the operation. If you will see this in church. The people that lie down, it's not the competition. And so, it's that daughter that is getting all the blessing. But well, she's happy. Amen. Amen. New car is coming for you. Amen. New house is coming. I'm prophesying it to your life. Shout amen. 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 <laughs> the blessing is coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you don't practice this thing, you will be complaining. You will be seeing people passing you over. Bitterness is one of the poisonous spirits. You know, that poison people promotion. People who are not moving, you know, you are just bitter. You are just thinking. Of the, of the, you ever know your neighbor? <laughs> amen, amen. Be aware, be, be, be aware, be aware, wake up. Amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says this wisdom does not descend from above. And say, but it is earthly. It is what? Sensual. And it is demonic. So, if you break this thing down, you will see that uh, when you are operating on the earthly realm, you are dangerous people. Amen. One thing about couple, couple should be filled with the wisdom from above. Amen. 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 We should be filled with what? Wisdom from above. If any couple, one of them is operating earthly, one of another one is operating heavenly, they cannot walk. <laughs> uh, am, I, am I complicating? Yes. And the Bible says in verse 15, this wisdom does not descend from above what is 
earthly, sensual, demonic, for where envy and self seeking exist. Confusion and every evil thing are there. Let's move ahead. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. pure. Somebody say pure. pure. Then peaceable, gentle, willing to eat, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make what? Peace. The scripture explains itself. Do you see where spirituality, hallelujah, is as advantage over the natural thing? Far, far, you know, superior. We need to move. We have moved, but we need to practicalize it. That we are spiritual people. I am not carnal. I am not empty, earthly. I am not sensual. You know, natural is good to be natural for some time, but don't dwell in natural realm. Because when you dwell in the natural realm, that's when the demonic attack will affect you. Am I communicating? Okay. Now let's look at just to bring my, you know, message to a close. Let's look at the book of first, the Second Kings. Second Kings. Holy We are going to pray. I see God breaking the power. It, it doesn't, you know, as long as how many of you are born again? Somebody say I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm born again. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm born again. I'm born again. Amen. Amen. Spiritual awareness. Second Kings. Holy Spirit. We are going to pray. Second Kings chapter 4. We are going to look at various examples. Because of time, we are just going to look at. Let's start from verse 8. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 8. You know, let, let me just explain this. Uh, there is there is price to be paid when you want to move it. Because people will say they will make guests of you. They will say you are not wise, but you know what you are doing. Amen. Amen. They will say you are foolish because you are not more operating in the natural. Uh, Hallelujah. Yeah. But there is a price to pay. They will ridicule you, like the scripture will say, he sold in dishonor and is raising what? In glory. Am I am I correct? You know, they will say you are weak. He's sown in weakness and is what raising power. When Jesus surrendered, his, uh, surrender, submitted himself, surrendered to death on the cross, he said, Why can't you, why are you doing this? He did it because he knows that when the resurrection, their body comes, it will come in power. Amen. 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 There is price to pay. But I tell you, when you begin to practice spiritual reign and you become, it becomes part of your life, it becomes your lifestyle, you become a life giver. Amen. Amen. The wisdom that is going to be flowing in your life is not of this realm. You will lay hand on the sea and the sick will do what? Recover. And that's what happened in this. 
in the life of a man called Elisha. He paid the price to become a spiritual person. He followed a man that was spiritual, Elijah. And he received a double portion. And if you want to be spiritual, you have to be connected to the people who are spiritual. Mm. I, am I communicating? Yes. The Bible says, if we want to be wise, you must be work with the wise. The company of the fool shall be destroyed. Mm. Somebody say, I'm connected. I'm connected. I'm connected. I'm connected. I'm connected. So, if you look at chapter 4, first of all, there was an encounter with a woman. She was a widow. She had nothing in, it, in her house. On top of that, the creditor came in. She connected herself to the person who is spiritual. Yeah. The, 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 the rest of the story, there was a breakthrough. Oil came, and she sold the oil. Debt was cancelled. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So in verse eight, the Bible says, "Now it happened one day that the Elijah went to Shun Shunem, where there was a notable woman. She persuaded him to eat some food. So it was." As often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat what? Some food. Some food. And she said, look at, look, at, look at what the woman said. And she said to her husband, look, I know. Somebody say, I know. Mm. My interaction with this man has brought spiritual awareness into my life. Amen. Amen. He said, I know that this is a holy man of God who passed by us regularly. I know. I know. I know. One thing I know about you. Amen. Amen. That you are the holy person. I know. I don't doubt it. I know. I have the knowledge that this is the holy man of God. There are different men of God. Amen. Amen. There are different men of God. I'm telling you. But this woman qualified this man of God. He put an adjective to his name. He said, this one is different. This man of God is not carnal. Amen. Amen. This man of God is the only man of God. And that will be your testimony. Amen. I know this is the only man of God who passed by us regularly. It pays to be holy. It pays to live. The Bible says this wisdom that comes from above is first of all pure. One of the signs of the spiritual men is the, they, they detest evil. They don't play with sin. Amen. Amen. They don't compromise their stand. That's a sign of spirituality. He said, I know this one. If he has been coming regularly and I have observed him, he's different from those men of God. Those men that will just prophesy because of your money. Fitri Lucre. <laughs> they are targeting your pockets. <laughs> you will see some guest minister. Immediately they go to church, they will see the car. Ah, these are cars. These people must be rich. They will just prophesy. There is something, 
Hey, so, 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 ah, that's my car. That's my car. I know this one is different. And that will be your testimony. Amen. You will flee from appearance of evil. Amen. I know you may be struggling now. But the power of God is going to come upon you. He's going to break the yoke of iniquity. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, I am pure. I am, pure. I am holy. I am holy. As my father. As my father. As my father. Say, I know. So let us tap into what we know. My husband. This is a spiritual man. Let's tap into it. And what did he say in verse 10? Please, let us make, you know, he has knowledge. But now he wants to walk in wisdom. He said, let us make a small upper room on the wall. On the upper room, on the wall. Let us put a bed for him there. A table, a chair, and a lamp stand. So it will, whenever it comes to us, it can turn in there, turn, it can turn in there, it can rest there. It, they pay the price. We want something spiritual in our hearts. Amen. Amen. What are these? Number one, let us put a bed there, a dwelling place for God. Let us consecrate our house. Number two, let us put a table there. Let us put a chair there. The place of study. Hallelujah. And let us put what? A lampstand there. A place of illumination. We need brightness in our house. Somebody say, I am connected, connected. To, the to the supernatural. Let's bring connection. Let's pay the price. And the Bible says, now it happened one day that he came there. He turned into the upper room. And God said, oh, these people have made a room for me. He has made a room for me. I have a dwelling place here. What is their need? What are they looking for? The woman said, I have everything. You see, my servant, yes, I go and connect. What is the need of that woman? The woman said, I don't have anything. I just want to enjoy the spirituality. And you got to know that they don't have a son. He said, the only thing he lacked is his son. Amen. Amen. And the man prophesied. I'm just summarizing my message. He, he knows. He knows there is power in you connecting and staying in the place of spirituality. He was coming. He was coming. Church, I believe church will become, you know, you, you, it's going to be a, a different thing to you. Mm. I started going to church. Ah, naturally. Hallelujah. I remember the first time I stepped into church by myself, without my parents, I was going there to go and chase a girl. Natural. And God arrested me. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I became spiritual. I started attending Bible study. I became spiritual up to now, over 33 years. I've been a spiritual person. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It started, I told you, it will start natural. God will cut your attention. But don't remain natural. Why are you coming to church? Is it because your parents brought you to church? No, it's not. Because my parents are bringing you to church. Is because I don't want to remain natural. I want to encounter God by myself. Am I am I complicated? Yes. Yes. 
You know, I found something different when I started going. Hallelujah. It's not I just, it's not, I thought, and when I first did, I saw people who were happy, they were jubilating. What? These are spiritual people. Let me connect to them. Let me find a table there. Let me find a bed there. Let this become my dwelling place. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me, let me, let me find a last time there. I want to shine. The Bible says we are a city that is set upon the hill. We cannot be hidden. I began to connect. And from today, I am not natural anymore. I used to be natural. I used to be going after the things of the world. But now, after the pantheon, the water so my soul longs after you. Say woman. 
Say, I am the man of God. I am the man of God. You know, they were not, it wasn't the cause of the problem. Because they knew that this man is a life giver. Amen. Amen. Look at those people who are coming to him. Number one, if it's not spiritual, they will not come to him. A widow came. Yeah. Hallelujah. A man who is influential, a woman who was influential, who has everything but lack a son, came. Sons of the prophet, they were attached to him. I see your group becoming an influence Amen. to your generation in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are the solution that the people are looking for Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And the Bible says they came, they came to him. They came to him. Man of God, there is a death in this spot. And they could not eat it. He said to them, then bring some flour. He provided the solution. And he put it in the pot. He said, serve the people. The same thing, where there was a death, he bring them life. He said, go and serve. I see anything, any death in your life, in your destiny, in your pot, I release the word of God into it this morning. In the name of Jesus. That thing that is causing sickness in your life, I do the same thing. I put the life of God into it. He said, bring the flower into it. It neutralizes every spirit of death over your destiny. In the name of Jesus, whether it's a spiritual death, whether it's a physical death, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. He said, man of God, he become a life giver. It's paid to be spiritual. He paid the price. What are the price you used to pay? You need to pay. Immediately, when I knew that spiritual pains, I was so young. I gave my life to Christ when I was 20. I began to study the scripture. I can quote 20 scripture in a week. I ate the word of God. You see, the word I did at Abakwam, and I did what eat them. They are like rejoicing, rejoice and rejoicing in my soul. I was studying. I count. You know, every scripture we have what we call the new believers class. In new believers class, every scripture in each lesson, they say we should memorize three at the end of the time, memorize ten each. I was eating the word of God. That's the thing. You, if you want to be spiritual, you have to eat the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Not only that, my mom started saying, oh, I don't know what has become of my son. He doesn't come out. I don't see the sun until 11 a.m. I will pray for morning. Them. They say, come and eat your breakfast, I won't come out. I pay for it. I spend my time in God's presence. I will do praise and worship. I will pray, 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 pray. In the night, I will pray, 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 pray. My wife, when we first get, get, got married, <laughs> we will do um, devotion together. I will go inside and go and pray, 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 pray. She's now, she can pray more than me. When we started, they say, which kind of man, which man is this? I don't have any life that is spiritual life. I need to build it. I need to maintain it. I used to be natural. I was the word of God, pray, go to church, Monday to Friday. You know, in Nigeria, we go to, we don't, it's not, we, are don't, we don't do Sunday, Sunday. Yeah. Doctor, <laughs> do we do Sunday, Sunday? <laughs> Monday, you will join the intercession team. Tuesday, Bible study. Wednesday, youth meeting. Thursday, <laughs> deliverance, <laughs> prayer meeting. Friday, <laughs> all night <laughs> service. Saturday, <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> 
and Sunday will come. Choir practice. <laughs> you pay for it. Somebody say he paid to be spiritual. He to be spiritual. Dude, I don't go anywhere. When I go, when I feel that I enter campus, like they knew that spiritual person enter campus. I began to chase all the demons. On that campus, there was a place they call it habitation where the, the people mess around. We turn into a prayer meeting. Before we know it, those people don't come. When there is a light, that place disappears. Yes. Every time they will be calling ambulance on you. Why ambulance? Mm. You are not spiritual enough. You need to become a way of it. Pay the price. Pay the price. First year on campus, I was made one of the executive, prayer executive. Second year, I was the main fellowship leader. Third year, I became Baba Saleh. <laughs> Elders. At that young age. I pray that God will lift you up. I pray that God will visit you. Amen. You will move Amen. in the realm of the supernatural. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will lay your hand on the sick. Amen. And the sick will recover. Amen. You will become a life giver. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will be a destiny transformer. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I want you to rise up upon your step and begin to pray. Spiritual awareness. The spiritual awareness brings understanding. Lebro Shekoria. It brings understanding. It brings wisdom. It brings solution into your life. 